Hello, my name is Craig Bailey. And I'm Angel Bailey. We are the pastors of New Life Christian Fellowship. We want to take a moment to thank you for watching our webcast. We pray it richly blesses you today. Serve a mighty God. I, that's family up in the house. Friends up in the house. Got kin folks in both directions. Amen. Uh, loved ones. Hey, family. Y'all, we all family. In the family of God. God is good. Amen. And I'm so thankful tonight that he is bringing a people together. Now, when God brings a people together, he does just that. He joins us fitly together, amen, for the working of the ministry of the body of Christ. He brings us together, and he fitly joins us together. Anything that don't fit, it either gets shaped into the, to fit into the mold, or he moves out and puts something else that will fit. How many is glad tonight that you are his sons and daughters? Amen. That God is shaping your life to fit where he wants you. Amen. I want to fit where God wants me. If I go where I want to go, and, and, and I won't fit. But if I go where God wants me to go, I'm going to fit. And then if I'm where I need to be, God's going to bless me there. Amen. Amen. God don't bless anything that is not of his will. So let's just give him a great big praise offer. Amen. He's mighty worthy to be praised. Amen. If you got your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is where we begin reading. Uh, God truly, if you have been listening and, and paying attention for the last few uh, months, God is really trying to get us in a place uh, to prepare us to go somewhere. How many knows the word prepares you to go somewhere? Amen. Amen. It, it, the word prepares you because it is preparing you uh, because the gospel was given uh, that we may understand uh, Jesus Christ and understand that he, he has a purpose for all of our lives and that he wants us none to perish. He wants us all to be saved. That's his desire. But how, uh, God is dealing with will and you and I that we have to submit to that will of God in our lives. And the coming of the Lord, uh, I believe with all my heart, we're, we're coming uh, to the ends of this thing. Uh, the signs, now I'm not going to sit here. People are foolish to predict the coming of the Lord. They've done it for years. And they've missed it every time. And uh, so uh, it, the Word does not teach you to predict, but it says to look in the Scripture. Look at the Word. Look at what's happening in, this, in the world. Look at the, what the Scripture said is going to be happening in the end time. And you see things that are strange happening in the land. He gives many examples. He said uh, there's going to be famines in the land. He said there's going to be earthquakes in divers places. He, says, he said the armies are going to be compassed about Jerusalem. When the armies are compassed about Jerusalem, he said, look up for your redemption, draw off not. He gave many, many signs. And, and, and we see that according to the scripture that the coming of the Lord, it, it's, it's got to be drawing nigh. But the key is for us as a church, we're not sitting back waiting on a, a rapture or to get out of here. We're, we're, we're to be busy getting people ready to meet the Lord. Amen. We are to be busy, amen, witnessing and sharing our faith, our, our faith in Jesus Christ to a world and trying to encourage them to live for God. Amen. amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he take it until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming 
even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now unto Lord, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God and even our Father who hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I want to preach with this thought in mind. Listen to the voice of God. The voice of God is always about preparation. It is always about preparing you for what is coming. And the Word of God, how many knows the Word of God is the voice of God to you and I? When we go to the Word of God, if you want to hear something from God, read the Word of God. You're hearing what God's Word is saying. You're hearing from God when you read the Word. And you want to know what's coming at the end? Read the Word. Hear the voice of the Lord. Amen? Because the Word of God is all about getting us ready. And this apostle is given a letter and a, a, a preparation and he said, the coming of the Lord is at hand. Now listen, if it was at hand then, how much closer is it right now? Amen. How much closer is it today? And with, and with this letter of, of preparation, he's also issuing a warning. Amen. How many of those, there's, there's preparation, and there's also a warning that if you don't prepare, what's going to happen to you? Amen. If you prepare, you don't have to worry about the warning. Hello? How many of those the sirens go off when there's some bad weather in the area? Anybody ever heard the siren? What do you do? Go out in the yard and play? Hey, tornado's coming. <laughs> no, you run for cover. <laughs> Amen. You, look, there, there was a guy that uh, lived down, uh, uh, some of my family, Kim folks here in the building knows him, uh, Pat Bowen was his name. When the, when, the, uh, when the siren started sounding, he, listen, it didn't have to be a siren. If a, if a, if a black dark cloud come up, there was a storm pit down the road, and you saw his truck. <laughs> he, he wasn't going to get caught in no tornado of any kind. It, it, if, it had, if it thundered, if it lightened, he was on his way. I mean, he was not going to get took out by no tornado <laughs> because he was scared of bad weather. He, he done heard a lot of warnings, and, but now he, until he left here, he just believed and prepared. He was, hey, he was prepared. He was prepared. And, and, and listen, it, it never hurts to be over-prepared, but I promise you it will hurt to be under-prepared. Amen. It's good to overdo something, but it's bad to underdo something. Amen. You can, you can build something. You can build a bridge out here that all of us are going across. And it don't hurt to overdo the strength of the bridge. But if you go, if you compromise the strength of it by not putting as much on it, we could all end up in a crash somewhere, in the bottom of a, of a lake or in the ocean, whatever. You can't compromise. How I many of those that you need to make sure that you pay attention to what God is saying for right now and for our generation? So the, the, the apostle was not only telling us to be prepared, he was also issuing a warning. A statement that, in, that indicates, and a warning is a statement that indicates a possible or impending danger, a problem or other unpleasant situation. A, a warning preparing God's people to not be asleep but be alert. Amen? Amen? Because before he is coming, verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And when we look at what is a falling away, falling away from the love of the truth. 
falling away from the love of God. Now, he emphasized it again in Revelation. We talked about it a few weeks ago, how they fell away from their first love. It, falling away from the love of God, from the love of the truth. And, and, and when you fall away from the love of the truth and the love of God, you begin to allow other things to go on and be, even take other beliefs in that is not scriptural. Because there's so, many, there's so many beliefs in the world today that it's confused. So many people are so confused. They don't know what to believe because of all that's being taught in the world today. But I want you to know if you've got an issue with what the truth is, you can always go to the Word of God and ask God to reveal it to you, and He will reveal it to you. And if you are sincere in your heart, God will connect you with a group of people that are living and walking in the truth. Do you believe that? He will hook you up with the right folks. And I said he will hook you up with the right people. If you love the truth, God's going to hook you up with people that are speaking the truth. Because the truth, how many know the truth is important? This warning that many people are going to fall away from the truth, that the son of perdition was going to rise and to make himself as God and to put himself in the temple as somebody. I, listen, listen, I want you to know today that no man, I don't care who he is, if he is born of flesh, of, of a mother and a father, no man deserves to be glorified. If he's got an earthly daddy and an earthly mama, he don't need to be glorified and honored as God. Somebody help me out now. Because believe me, there's people in the land today that are being glorified as if they are somebody uh, like God when there is no other God but the living God. Of, amen. I'm here to tell you today that he's the only one that deserves to be glorified, but the enemy is coming and he is setting people up to make him look like he is somebody working line wonders. Amen. amen. When you read the scripture, it was a warning. That's the reason... Uh, Jesus taught this. Now, I believe in signs and wonders, but I don't seek them. They're supposed to follow you, not be ahead of you. Think about it. A lot of folks seek signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are not supposed to be ahead of you. They're supposed to be behind you. They were we have been because the Spirit of God is moving and working signs. They follow them that believe. If they are in front of you, then you're seeking a sign. He said a wicked and perverse generation seeketh after a sign. In other words, if you show me something, I will believe it. Well, I promise you the son of perdition is going to show many lying wonders and many people are going to go headlong for it. But we have a warning from the Word of God. I believe God wants to work miracles, but his miracles are truth. How many members in the, in the Old Testament when Moses throwed down his rod? Woo! They throwed down their rod and it became a serpent. But I like what Moses' serpent did. When he threw it down, what does the Bible say? His serpent did to the other one. Swallowed him up. Ate him up, my Lord. You know why? Because the true God and the true sign of God is not going to be outdone by the devil. The devil always tries to imitate. But let me tell you something. He may try to imitate, but he cannot duplicate. I'm here to tell you tonight, he can't be right. He might try to appear as an angel of light, but I want you to know there's only true light. The only true light is Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ being in you and I, and his light shining through us to this world. Amen. Let no man deceive you. Amen. Look, truth and lies have always been at war since the beginning. Truth and lies has always been at war. There's always been a battle between good and evil. From the beginning of the time, God created all things. He created it right. He created it good. But he did one thing. He put man in the middle of it. And when you put man in the middle of something, there's a risk. <laughs> there is a risk. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. God made him. Did he, is that what the scripture said? The devil just didn't show up. God made him. Amen. And he said, that serpent said unto the woman, Yea, 
Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. He ain't nothing but a liar. He's always lied. He's lied from the beginning, didn't he? For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods. See, the temptation has been there since the beginning. The devil trying to build somebody up to be God. You can be just like, you can be God. You're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Wow. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Verse 1 declares, listen, God made the enemy, he made him. And he had power over everything. Listen, listen, the thing about it is, Satan hath no power. God possesses all power. The only power Satan possesses is the power God gives him. He did not have power over the woman nor the man in the garden. The only way they got in trouble is they believed his lies. And that's what's going on in the world today. People are believing the devil's lies. And that's the reason the enemy is controlling and manipulating their life is because they are believing the lies that the enemy is telling. You shouldn't even be having a conversation. She shouldn't even been having a conversation with the enemy she should not even been wasting her time listening to his lies because when you give ear to the enemy that brings a negative ne negative spirit an old doubting spirit unbelieving spirit a spirit that has that has falsehood in it a spirit that has lies in it when you start listening to that stuff and you listen to it long enough you start believing it and when you start believing it you get in trouble Amen. Amen. I want you to know today what he had then, what the enemy had was this. He had a voice. He couldn't do anything. He only had a voice. And he talked. And when he spoke, somebody listened. And Adam and Eve both were cast out of the garden that God had created for them because they listened to the voice of the enemy. And the voice of the enemy today is seeking to devour and destroy children of God. Listen, these were children of God created in his own image, in the image of God. Didn't they, were they not created in the image of God? Yes, they were. Who were we created in? My God, the image of God. God had created us. We have been born again of the water and spirit. If we have been born again of the water and spirit, we are created in God's image. What does Satan want to do? He wants to break that fellowship that we have with God. He wants to do everything he can to disrupt that fellowship, to break that connection. And all you and I need to do is tune him out and tune God in. You and I need to stay focused on what God is telling us. Tune out the enemy. Listen to what the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God and he will lead you the right way Amen. Satan will confuse you many people are confused because they're listening to it they're giving him a given him an ear to talk to amen but God wants us to be sure listen what the devil did was she listened to him long enough and Adam listened to Satan changed the truth into a lie and when man starts reasoning with the context of truth. When man starts reasoning out the context of truth, listen, the word is forever settled. It does not change. That's the wonderful thing about the word of God. It will never change. You can always go back to it. It's still, for, it's settled. It is the word of God. It changes not. Amen. And I am thankful that it changes not. But the voice of the enemy starts ringing louder when we start changing the truth.
into something else. These people in 2 Thessalonians had fell out of love with truth. They were loving something else. And I want you to know today, it's just like it was in the time of Jesus. These men were, were religious men, religious creatures. And they fought against truth, which was Jesus Christ. They fought against him, and they held on to their traditions, thinking they were serving God, but their heart was far from God. Right. Amen. Amen. we got to have a heart for truth. Amen. Amen. Her conversation with Satan cost them everything they had in God it don't take but one conversation amen. amen this lying spirit is still in the world today and many are being swallowed up because of it they're reasoning the truth and trying to reason out the truth with a natural mind and a natural mind can never comprehend truth it cannot register Amen. We talked about it Sunday. You've got to have a spiritual mind for it to register in your spirit. Amen. The big lie of Satan, of Satan is it won't harm you. Just go ahead. Amen. It's just a one-time event. Think about it. How many has ever heard the devil say, oh, it's just one time? It, it, how can it hurt you? It's just one time. Smoke that cigarette. It's just one cigarette. Smoke you one more and one more. Now you're addicted. It's just one, whatever. It don't no matter what it is. Just one. One, whatever it is. One. It don't take but one. One, one, one. I want you to know today, people in the world today needs to know there is hope and there's strength. But God wants us to be sanctified by his spirit. Amen. And walk in sanctification. The enemy wants to destroy and turn the lie into something that's false. Living for God, church, is we got to be real. We got to be honest. We got to have integrity if we're going to live for God. Amen. What does the Bible say about a good name? A good name is rather to be had than great riches. You can't buy a good name. You can't buy integrity. Amen. I want you to know the enemy wants to deceive this world today, but the voice of God, if we listen to the voice of God, that he is preparing us and getting us ready for what is coming. Amen. Many people have fallen away from truth. Amen. From sound doctrine. They have fallen away, not understanding that they are embracing, listen to this, they're embracing a snake. How would you like to kiss a snake on the lips? Well, there's some crazy folks that'll do it, but this ain't one of them. But that's exactly what they're doing and don't even realize this. Man, I would not go into a house where there's a snake anywhere in that house if I know he's in that house. But there's a lot of folks sit down on the couch with him, have a talk with him, go to bed with him, wake up with him. The enemy is continually in their ear, in their mind, in their heart, continually buffeting and warring with them, and they don't recognize who he is and what he is doing to their life and the destruction that he is bringing to them. Look at Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her. 
plagues. You hear what he said? Come out of her, my people. I want you to know God wants us to be his and only his. It is very serious serving God. God wants you for his own. He will not share you and I with the world. He will not share us with the devil. He wants you and I and he wants us wholeheartedly. He wants everything about you. He don't want 50% of you. He don't want 45 or 30 or 20 or 15, 10 or, or 5. He wants 100% of our life. He said the day you seek me with your whole heart. He said then shall I be found. I want you to know 99 percent just won't do. God wants 100 percent. He does not want to live in a duplex apartment with the devil. Somebody help me out tonight. How many to say I'm going to serve the Lord. I have come out of the world and I'm a separated creature under God. He is my God. I'm going to serve him in holiness and truth and righteousness because I love the truth. I'm not ashamed of the truth. I'm going to serve him because he's worthy that we should lift him up, exalt him, hold Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he is wants a holy people. Somebody give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come out from her, my people. And be not partakers of her sins. Because the world has gone after her. The world has gone after Jezebel. The world has gone to bed with Jezebel. He, commit, he talked about it in Revelations. I'm just speaking about Revelations. But it is sin. It is idolatry. Amen. It is the world of ungodliness and perversion that is setting up for the son of perdition to rule. I want you to know the son of perdition is going to go down. He's not going to reign. Amen. He's going to have his time, but God said he's going to have his time until I say it's enough. But God's people, you and I, we are servants. I mean, we are servants of the king, of the most high God, and Satan will never have control of God's people. He will never rule God's church. He wants to, but he can't because Jesus Christ is the head of this. And if he's the head of it, he's going to take care of his people. But let me tell you something. He'll take care of those that come out from among that stuff and that sin and that abomination and follow him. He will take care of those that come to him and say, here I am, God. I belong to you. Truth is not mixed with evil. Many have changed their stance on truth. Many have had that conversation, like Eve. They listened to the devil. And they listened to him one time, two times, and another time. Man, don't, let me tell you something. He's going to keep talking to anybody that will give him an ear. Amen. They bent their ears to hear the voice of transgression. God said, come out of her, my people. Amen. Amen. Don't get swallowed up in the teasing of her delicacies. Because I promise you, the world will promise you everything and to deliver you death. They, the world will promise you all the joy, all the happiness, and all the peace and give you nothing. They cannot deliver on it. It is destructive. Pleasure endured for just a... But the joy of the Lord is my strength and the mercy of God endures forever unto those. How many can say, I belong to Jesus Christ and I want you to know my joy comes from God. It's not temporary. How many, how many, how many has had joy? How many got joy when you got saved? When I got baptized in the Spirit, I told, uh, I rehearsed this again. The brother said, Amen. When God got a hold of me, amen, as a, as a 14 year old, man, I, he got a hold of me. I, I started talking in tongues, and man, they put me to bed. They drove me 25 miles, put me in bed. I was still talking in tongues. I, amen. I went to sleep and then woke up. Mama said, I said all kind of confessions while I was asleep. The Holy Ghost was cleaning me out. You hear me? He, he, he done moved in, and he was just taking care of those, uh, those things for me. Amen. I said, what did I say? <laughs> the Holy Ghost, he was just taking care of it. Amen. I'm thankful that he got me when I was young. I'm thankful that he took, took control when I was a young man. Amen. And I, listen, it, it, it doesn't mean that I ain't made a lot of mistakes because I have. But Jesus hadn't made one along the way. 
but he's delivered me out of a lot of them. Amen. How many can say he's a deliverer? That if you want to come out, if you want to come out of sin, amen, he will welcome you in. I'm here to tell you, if you'll look his way and put your eyes upon him, he will draw you close to him. He will hold you upright. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said he will hold you upright upon your feet. Though the enemy come from the left and the right, God will hold you upright. He will hold you by his right hand of authority and power. He will not let the enemy take you down. Somebody say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. John, 3 John 1 and 11 says it like this. It says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. What does the word teach us? It says, Turn from that which is evil. And do that which is right. Is that what the word teaches us? And God shall reveal his glory to those that follow after him. You shall see his glory. When you see the glory of God, you know. Amen. What did, what did Moses see? Man, the glory of God was so bright, God had to put him in a cleft of the rock that when he passed by, amen, he allowed him to see his hinder part. And that glory was so bright. How many of those were... <laughs> When, when Moses spent some time with God, he was glowing. And it was, it was more than just a spiritual glow because the people couldn't even look at him. He was so bright. Did, did a veil have to be put on their face or not? It was a glow on him. And, and let me tell you something. That glory has been done away with. How much more is the glory that excelleth, which is the glory we're supposed to walk in? Sometimes it may not look appealing to the flesh, but I'll take it. How many say, I'll take the glory of God any day? They may look at you and say, you silly uh, for serving God, you silly, uh, because you go to that church down there that believes in all them gifts and all that stuff. They let them say what they want to. We having fun. At least I am. I know I'm having fun. I don't know. What about the rest of you? Amen. I believe this is what the jo- I'm having fun. My God, they're the ones waking up with a hangover, waking up in jail somewhere, waking up, waking up depressed, having to get uppers and downers and, and outers and all them things. In the, and I've got the Holy Ghost. How many's got the Holy Ghost? If you've got the Holy Ghost, you got something that'll pick you up. Amen. When you get down, I look to Him. I look to Him. I'm happy. Somebody, somebody, tell your face that you are happy. Woo! My God, it gets me excited. Amen. What does the word say? It says to make your calling and your election sure. Amen. We need to know that our hearts are pure before God and that there is no deception working in us. Amen. The word says there was no sin nor deception in his mouth, no guile, no deception in him. How many knows uh, it was nothing but truth? Amen. We got, how many knows if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged? If we judge ourselves, if we look at our own lives by the word of God and, 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 and look at ourselves and say, you know what, I, God, I've got to get lined up. And if we judge ourselves, then he won't have to judge us. My God, how many knows he is truth? We must love the truth. And that love will leave, leave no room with a conversation with the devil. It won't leave any room with a conversation from the enemy. Amen. What's the apostle saying? Let's read it again. Let no man deceive you. By any means, for that day shall not come except they're coming falling away first. What does that mean? People will rise up calling truth and goodness evil. Listen, they'll rise up and they'll call those things that are good and righteous, they'll call them evil. And they will declare the voice of the world that worketh in them that evil is good. They'll turn it around. They'll, they'll, they'll call what you're doing evil and what they're doing is good. Well, let me read it. Isaiah 5 and 20. Let me read it to you. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Listen, many are in bed with the enemy as stated in Revelations. They're in destruction. Their lives is, is destructive. Everything about them. Amen. They hate the truth. 
and they, they take evil and build it up as good. And that's what our world is doing today. That's exactly what the world is doing today. They will scorn you for standing up for what's right. How many times have I seen people have to apologize for telling the truth? Well, somebody help me out. A preacher get up and tell the truth. The news media will jump him like the junkyard dog. And the next thing he's doing is saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tell the truth. <laughs> well, he don't word it like that. <laughs> I should have been nice. He gets up and says, this is the judgment of God. They all come down on him. They put him he, gets, he gets famous quick. But I want you to know that you and I have got to love the truth. And this is what he was talking in the very beginning in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. You got these people who didn't love the truth. And that's the reason they got in trouble. But those that love the truth, that love God, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Hey, man, God is going to take care of you. Why? Because you, you understand and declare what's right. Amen. We got to hear what God has to say. We got to declare our stand for Jesus Christ. Amen. How do we do that? We show him we love him, amen, by keeping his word. We show the world. We let the world see it in our lives daily. We let them see who we are serving, amen? We don't just give lip service. There's a lot of people give lip service, amen? But we got to give ourselves to God wholly. And listen, the voice of the world is getting louder and louder. Where is the voice of the church? It's time for the voice of the church to get louder for God. Amen? It's time for the voice of the church to stand up. Amen? Listen, God is... Look, there's so many people in the world today, they just simply don't know God. They claim to know God, but they really don't know God. God has given us a choice. Everyone in this place, we have this choice. Amen. A choice of good and evil has been demanded. A choice of good and evil has been demanded by God from the beginning of time. Thousands of years ago. I'm going to read it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 30. God has always required his people to stand up to come out. Just like he said in Revelation, come out of her. He's always required that. Either we're going to stand down or we're going to stand up. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. The very thing these people in Thessalonians quit doing, God has always required it from the beginning to love him, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the earth, upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to possess it. Look what he said in verse 19. I'll call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. Everybody say, choose life. Choose life, choose life that, thou, that both thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Amen. God has always wanted a people to make a decision, to make a choice to serve him. Amen. He's always required that. How many has made your choice to serve the Lord? Amen. Look, love, our love for God and truth will always, will always testify of our decisions. It will always do it because my decisions is based upon my love for God and love for his word. Our decisions have got to be based on it. From the very beginning, we wrote this uh, from the scripture, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me finish it up. Verse 13 again. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, 
Beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. He hath chosen you to salvation. Every one of you in this building need to hear me right now. You're not here by accident. Amen. We're not here by just happen to be here. Amen. We have been chosen. We have been chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Listen. Chosen to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's it. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, everybody say stand fast. Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Amen. I thank God tonight that if we will live by what God's word says to us and we will stand fast into that, amen, we will not have to worry what's going to happen to the world. Amen. Why am I not worried about what's going to happen to the world? Because I'm not of the world. I'm in the world, but we are not of the world. We don't have to fear. When I read Revelations and all the plagues that's going to be opened up, I don't have to fear the plagues because I'm on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side among you tonight? How many can say, I am on the Lord's side? When the fire is falling, I'm going to be on the Lord's side. When the false prophet arises, I'm on the Lord's side. When he gets cast into the bottomless pit of hell, I'm on the Lord's side. It don't matter what comes or goes, I'm on the Lord's side. It don't matter how bad it gets, I'm on the Lord's side. It don't matter what I got to go through, we know if we're on the Lord's side, it's going to be all right. Does anybody believe it's going to be all right? Amen. I'm not worried about ISIS because I am on the Lord's side. And if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? It don't matter who it is. Somebody, oh, you better be worried. I'm not worried about the devil. Amen. My feet is on the rock. Jesus Christ is the rock. Amen. I'm building on him. When you're building on him, you can have faith and trust in the Lord with all your heart. You don't have to fear the enemy. This world has become gripped with fear. They're gripped with fear. They're scared. But the Lord said, fear not, for I am with you. Does that mean shaking your shoes? No, it means to fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. He said, I will go with you all the way. Somebody say all the way. Is that part of the way? No, it's all the way. He said, I'm going to go with you unto the end. He said, I'm going to be with you to the end, from the beginning to the end. I am the beginning and end. I've already saw you. I saw you when you was formed in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you. Amen. And now, he said, I'm going to see you through. He said, but you got to stick with me. Is anybody going to stick with him? I'm going to stick with the Lord tonight. Amen. Sticking with him. Hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on. Somebody say, hold on. on. Amen. God does not want you to fear. He has not given you a spirit of fear, but of perfect love. How many of love, of the love of God? Perfect love cast it out all fear. A sound mind, amen? He's given us a sound mind that if we take God at his word, when something goes wrong, when something gets brought to my attention and it ain't good, I go back to the word. And I say, well, Lord, your word says that if you be for me, who can be against me? I always go back to the voice of God and I listen to it. I read it and I want my ears to witness it, amen? I said, my eyes have seen it. Amen. My voice is saying it, but my ears are hearing it. Faith coming by hearing. Amen. Hearing by the word of God. I have to remind myself what God said. Because God said, heaven and earth is going to pass away. But my, what my voice has spoken, what my word has said, it shall never, 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 never. Pass away. It shall never fail. Hold on to God's word tonight. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and delight yourself in him and see if God won't take care of you. Come on, somebody praise him tonight. Amen. Woo. Anybody going to listen to the voice of God? Amen. Wow. 
The enemy, the Bible says, is going up and down to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus done something for his children so that the devil cannot devour them. He said, Behold, I have shut the mouth of the lion. He said, I will shut the mouth of the lion. I will shut the mouth of the gangsayer. I will shut them up. Amen. God said, I will, I will take care of it for you. But trust in him tonight. Listen to the voice of God. Don't fall away from what's right, what's holy, and what's true. Amen. God is still the same God. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's still in charge of everything. And there's nothing going to happen to you that God has not seen before it ever comes knocking on your door. Amen. That's my comfort and my consolation in the hope that Jesus Christ has wrote my life. Amen. Because we were called, chosen unto salvation through sanctification of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Woo. That means we are set apart. We were set apart. Father, I thank you for the word of God tonight. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, God, that is moving in this place. I thank you, God, for loving us, for watching over us. Thank you, Father, that you're not a hard taskmaster. Thank you, Lord, that you're not mean. Thank you, God, that you're reaching out to each and every one of us that we would just turn it over to you. God, it's not my desire to hurt a soul. It's the enemy that looks at what we all, every one of your children do for good and calls it evil. That when your men and women of God stand up and declare the truth, he brings a railing accusation against them. But I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have rebuked Satan. That he answered to you. And just as the angel, Michael, didn't bring a railing accusation against him, he said, the Lord rebuked thee. I thank you, God, that you are watching over us. And when the enemy tries, to bring us down. We look to you. We are your sons and daughters. We are your children. And you stand up and fight for us and you drive back the powers of hell. And you cause us to become bold. And you grant us power through the Holy Ghost. Power to become the sons of God, to do the work that you've called us to do on this earth. Lord, tonight I'm asking you to move and let your voice speak to us in this place. And I'm asking you to grant liberty and victory to each and every person. You know where our struggle is and you know what we're battling tonight. You know what we've been dealing with. And you know how the enemy tries to lure and tries to pull. You said, come out. You said, come out from among them and be you a separated people. Thank you, Lord God, that we belong to you. Thank you, God, that you love us, you care for us, and you bring us truth, and we love it. We don't want nothing but the truth. We don't want to lie. We want the truth tonight, and the truth shall make us free. Let your spirit tonight just minister to our lives. Can we stand upon our feet tonight? Amen. Lord, we glorify you tonight. Anyone needs prayer, this would be a good time to come. Hallelujah. God is raising him up a people in this hour. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. God has been speaking to me. He's been speaking to me that it is time to go to the next level 
And the Lord reminded me last night, once again, that he's getting ready to take a people to the next level. And the people that don't want to go to the next level, they'll go somewhere else. But God said, don't worry about those that go somewhere else. He said, I'm going to bring some people in. Those that are going out, I'm bringing some in, and they want to go to the next level. I'm excited about that. I don't know about you. I don't want to see anybody go. I'm just excited about going to the next level. And of people that want to go there, anybody want to go there? Oh, I want to go to that level with Christ Jesus. I'm excited about what God is doing. Could you pray with me right now? Come on, just extend your hearts up right now to God and just begin to worship Him. Begin to cry out to Him. Amen. Praise God. We hope you enjoyed today's sermon and pray that you've been uplifted by God's Word. We would love to hear from you. Please take a minute and check out our website. We would love for you to come and join us for worship anytime. May the Lord richly bless you.